You may have seen them in concert. Or know their music from the soundtrack of a Ken Burns film. You may know them as recording artists or as professional photographers. <laughs> or perhaps you're not familiar with the husband and wife duo of Asheville, North Carolina's Al Petaway and Amy White, but their story is of a woman who was blind to her own potential and the man who opened her eyes. Now, Al Petaway was always destined to be a performance artist. From the time I was about 10 or 11, I was performing in some way or another. Amy White was too insecure to share her musical talents. I was a closet, a feverishly closeted composer and writer. And although the two grew up near each other in Virginia, they only met when a mutual friend arranged for them to meet at a concert in 1994. It was one of those things where when we met, it was an instant recognition. And that was it. It was just, where have you been, you know? There you are. It was just, you know, it happened. It first led to making music. I just joined him for a few tunes, and then pretty soon we were just, we just loved playing together. And so we just started creating music together to play. And, and that was it. Marriage came in 1996, and today this couple creates unique music. Lately we've been calling it Celtic Appalachian Acoustic Groove. We want people to be able to come to our concert and forget about everything and just relax and then go out of there feeling good. They've collected plenty of awards, including Al's Grammy in 2004. In addition to music, Al was a photo editor at National Geographic for 18 years. Now he and Amy have both become noted photographers whose work is available through the National Geographic Image Collection. And more recognition has come through the documentary films of Ken Burns. For the movie soundtracks, writer and co-producer Dayton Duncan often utilizes the music of Al and Amy. Their performances as well as their compositions have emotion in them, they have drama in them, you feel something. Dayton Duncan really loved Al's guitar playing. My son's a guitar player and, uh, and a bit of a composer himself. He thinks that Al Petaway is God. <laughs> Maybe the music of Al and Amy is indeed heavenly. So you wouldn't think that Amy believed she wasn't good enough to perform in public. Growing up in a musical family, Amy alone was afflicted with a form of dyslexia and has never been able to read music. She only plays by ear, the opposite of her father, an oboist in the National Symphony. They weren't close. I think I heard him say I love you once or twice. Their distance extended to music. They never played together before I came in the picture. But with Al's encouragement and his ability to put on paper what Amy composed, there was a breakthrough. So what I did, um, it was my first piano, solo piano album, which is now out of print. I really wanted to have my dad on there. So I wrote a piece for my dad. What was really cool about that was being able to sit between them and be the interpreter, you know, because neither one of them spoke the other language. <laughs> so here I am, like 31, 32 at the time, first time I played music with my father, and we just broke up crying. I'll never forget it. I'm so grateful for Al. To, you know, he brought us together in a way that we never could have been. It was a turning point. Amy went on to become the unexpected musical star of her family. She and Al now routinely play to packed houses around the country. Their music and art are cherished by many. And life is good. I think we're just extremely lucky. We just want to keep on doing this for as long as we can. I'm Jeff Klein for North Carolina Now.